So, um, Mr. Maidman, now, what is beauty in your opinion? God, this is really difficult. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I think I'm not. I think that it's a very complex concept and and a word that doesn't mean something specific. But there is certainly a pyramid of uh, qualities that you could build up uh, that would lead you into the territory of beauty. So for instance, when, uh, when I'm saying that a figure is beautiful, there are several different ways that uh, I can talk about it. You can talk about like formal qualities, uh, youth, athleticism, uh, proportion, grace, that people think of when they're like, oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that those are fairly uh, superficial qualities. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a parallel beauty of rendering in art where, you know, the line has a grace to it and the rendering of forms is subtle and, uh, and fluid and you have a sense of the reality of the thing and no part sticks out as wrong and no part is out of proportion or misdrawn. Um, and then you look at like late Michelangelo drawings and there's almost nothing there, but they're mm -hmm. among his most beautiful drawings. And it's because they, he has, he's gone past the formal beauty of muscle and bone and, uh, and dynamic posing that uh, define his earlier drawings and he has reached a, a sort of an inward spiritual truth that um, that flays uh, the outward qualities. So there are these almost these very indistinct and simple uh, drawings of Christ that um, that are out of proportion and poorly defined and uh, indecisive, but they are so profound, and we have a deeper experience of ourselves and of our communing with Michelangelo and with the divine through uh, through those drawings than we do from his earlier drawings, which are dazzling and in a different, but I think less mature way. Mm. On top of that, there's the difference between things that work and things that don't work. And I think that that's like completely unpredictable and maybe even indefinable. Um, so you could do like a hundred drawings and 50 of them could have this sort of like formal beauty and 50 of them could have the spiritual beauty, but there would be one where you're like, oh my God, that's totally just right. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't know it's happened until you're partway through it. There, you can't anticipate nailing it like that. Um, and, uh, and you can't ex even necessarily explain it after mm -hmm. it's happened. Um, and that's also, uh, I think th that's, that's when you, uh, have uh, transcended, I think, your ego and have become a vessel for something powerful that transmits itself into the world through you, uh, which I think is the true form of inspiration. Uh, but, and so there's, it's almost like a separate, uh, a separate meditative practice that leads to that, uh, that sort of experience. And only in the context of that sort of experience does something that works happen, I think. Um, but on the other hand, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say that I was wrong saying that just now, because sometimes you're like toodling along, uh, yeah. you know, lost in your own personal uh, issues and ego. And then you look down and you're like, holy crap, this is, I nailed it. Like, this <laughs> is it. Um, but these things just pop up. And I think they're, they're like dreams. They're unique and specific. And they have no history and no evolution. You don't know where they came from and you don't know where they're going. You're just lucky that they interacted with your hand. Mm. Um, and so that's, um, that's another facet of beauty that I think is probably um, it, its most powerful manifestation. And then there are these descriptions of beauty where you talk about um, ex the experience of the viewer in confrontation with beauty, that they have an experience uh, both of adoration and of terror. Um, and I think that that's important too. I think that beauty uh, should be uh, so scalding that, uh, that it takes you apart in a way. Uh, 
there, it's an intense phenomenon. Um, and so there's you, you can approach beauty from not from the perspective of trying to create it in your work, but from the perspective of somebody experiencing it uh, as a form of shock that uh, that detaches you from your assumptions about the limits of things mm -hmm. um, and puts you into a terrifying divine territory that's bigger than yourself. And I've seen people undergo this. I, I had the horrible uh, bad luck that a friend of mine who never understood art had this experience uh, looking at a Renoir. Um, uh -huh. And I was like, oh my God, it had to be Renoir. And he, <laughs> he was just standing there for hours and he was like, I understand art now. And I was like, okay, I mean, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, but that was, where he, that was where he had that revelation. And it is a form of revelation. And that form of revela that, that revelation comes about as a response to beauty. And the beauty in question has to interlock perfectly with your spiritual state at the moment of the encounter. Um, so there are lots of things to say about beauty, but I don't know that I, I can sit down and tell you the last word about it. So 